This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. With the three great gift sets that the Mad Canadian has over at themadcanadianbbq.com, you can find a gift set for your special one at home or a family member or a friend or for everybody. You have the Just Send It, which consists of the S&P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, and the Cajun. And we have the Sweet Heat. i to make sure I read this correctly. Apologize. The Sweet Heat, the Four Horsemen, Discord, Two Border, and the Old Fashioned, or our personal favorite, the Whole Hog, yeah. which is one of each of the 14 seasonings that the Mad Canadian has currently at his website. Be sure to also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered for Christmas. This episode of the SLOOPCAST is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, Iron Bean Coffee has been a good friend for a few weeks now. Um, Really happy to be working with them because they are a veteran-owned, small-batch, roast-to-order company. Uh, they're also an Ohio-based company working out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near uh, Toledo. And I'm like I said, I've been working my way through these uh, sampler bags and my unicorn bag, which is now significantly emptier. Um, and, and they're all really, really good. I still think my favorite's the cast iron so far, but I still have some to work through. Uh, some of the more popular flavors are available in K-Cups. And they have a gift card. If you are if you have a coffee snob in your life or you want to get a Christmas gift for, but you don't know enough about coffee or know enough about what they like about coffee to actually buy something for them, you have that really nice specific gift card. I know some people are weird about giving gift cards because maybe they feel like they're impersonal, but I think there's a really good way around that by giving an incredibly personal gift card, a, a incredibly focused gift card. And I think that a... If you have a coffee snob in your life, I think an Iron Bean gift card is exactly that. So you can find that gift card. You can find a bunch of great coffees and a whole lot more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What is going on, YouTube? Man, you came in quick with that. You came in real quick with that. I'm going to have that's going to that's going to screw me up in the edit, Kyle. Thanks. I'm just messing with you. Thanks. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everybody have a turkey hangover, food coma. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and get this actually released so that at least our Patreons might get this before Thanksgiving. I'm going I'm to try and get this as a real early release, but mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see how that goes. But that none of they probably aren't even hearing this because it's, no, they're not. <laughs> the early release doesn't get this conversation. Only the YouTube people get this conversation. Kyle, your camera died. My camera died. There I am. Hi, Kyle. All right, Kyle. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, rejoin our audio listeners. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I have a question for you, though. Uh, sure. During the Mad Canadian read... Uh, mm-hmm. you, you suggested that you could get some Mad Canadian spices for that special one in your life. Yes. Something along those lines. I'm not married. I don't have a wife. So I need to ask you a question. Since you are married, you do have a wife. Mm-hmm. Are you treading on dangerous territory by getting your wife food seasoning? Yes. Okay. Because I'm the one grilling. <laughs> Well, I just, I didn't know if it was, I feel like that's maybe now that being said, cause I know, I know women listen to this podcast. This is not an exclusively male audience. I know that for a fact, dudes want this, but want both, both of these things as a, as a Christmas present. I'll tell you that right now that that's, that's great. I think maybe treading on dangerous territory with almost like, Hey wife, spice it up. Would you? She might take that the wrong way. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. I'm sorry if I talked you out of a sale, Mad Canadian, but I, I owe you a few. It's fine. 
All right, we got we got a lot to get into. Yeah, here. we do. So let's go ahead and start off by talking about some basketball. Is that the third episode in a row we've started with basketball? I think so. Basketball, or maybe maybe the third out of the last four. Maybe either it doesn't way. matter. Ohio's, Move forward. Either way, Ohio State wins their opener against the Illinois State. Oh, I forgot what they were. I about to said Cardinals, not the Cardinals. They're like the, some some sort of bird. The a Ill- bird. Ill- the Illinois State, some sort of birds. Yes, uh, they they win ninety four to sixty seven. We knew this was going to be a pretty much a big blowout here, yeah. but really impressed with a lot of just seeing seeing the new newcomers, the new faces for this program here. And I, I think I think we'll have a pretty solid showing this year from again, only one game so far, but I really liked seeing uh, what I've saw so far from like from like sewing, from Walker, from little. I I really like them. I really like it. I they're not going to be world beaters, but I think this would be a fun team to watch throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, we definitely saw some Liddell uh, later. Oh, oh, come on! Hey, come on! You come here, good girl. Well, <laughs> we're powering through it. It's okay. This is a, this is a special holiday edition in which we power through things. Um, it's uh, we saw a lot of Liddell, uh, especially later last season, but he's mm-hmm. now a guy on this team. And I think that was becoming more and more true the later we went on last season, but it's definitely going to be the case this season. Um, Suing looks great. Uh, I, I really, really am impressed by suing Ohio state went on a 22 to zero run at the beginning of the game. uh, Suing. And they had a good run in the second, in the second half too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, But yeah, yeah. Suing, suing went, eight for nine for the game had 19 points uh, total for the game there. Um, if there, there's definitely one thing to concern about this team, it's just like, it seems like the past couple of years free throw, they were 72% from the line there, but it's the opening game. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to get, get on them too much being the first game, but definitely something to keep an eye out moving forward. Yeah, I, I agree. All right. All right. Um, moving on. By from the way, basket- uh, real real quick, want to say Key looked good as well. Yes, Key. Yes. Uh, all right. Moving on to football here. Uh, we have some cancellations here. Yeah. Uh, we have Tulsa versus Houston. Yeah. Cincinnati versus Temple. Yep. And probably the biggest one here: Wisconsin versus Minnesota. And because this is the third game that's been canceled for Wisconsin. They are now ineligible for the Big Ten Championship, which means, Jared, all North, all Northwestern has to do in their final three games mm-hmm. once. You said win once. Win once in okay. their final three games. Yeah. Uh, we knew the path for Wisconsin, or excuse me, Northwestern was going to be pretty easy because uh, Wisconsin has uh, not performed great. <laughs> since week mm-hmm. one but it, it, they'll definitely get but that it's here. way I mean, easier now yeah. i mean northwestern northwestern is playing sparty oh boy and then they're playing minnesota and then they're playing illinois yeah so <laughs> yeah <laughs> two of those are pretty guaranteed wins and minnesota as we talked about on the monday show you never know which minnesota is going to show up the Minnesota that sucks or the Minnesota that's great. Mm-hmm. You just, yep. one of the two of them is going to show up. So who knows on that one, but they should really win the other two. Yep. And all, all Ohio state has to do is win two I, of the I final three games. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> all right. I Kyle, your camera again, buddy. What's your camera? I got I got to get a new cable. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nick Saban, probably for sure this time <laughs> test positive for COVID. Yeah, uh, he actually has symptoms. Now, Alabama has stated that these symptoms are mild. So let's hope that they're being completely up up and up and honest about that. But Alabama has stated that they are mild and therefore no one's working under any assumption or 
you know, when he tested positive last time, they scheduled him for a bunch of tests for follow up to trying to get him re-eligible to make sure that that first test was a false. But they're not doing that this time. Since he has symptoms, there aren't going to be any retests. He's not going to show up for the game last second. Uh, it's not going to be anything like that. He will not be coaching in this game, period. Yep. All right. Last thing here before we move on to our next segment here, the playoff rankings. Playoff rankings oh, was... Kyle, enough. I need... Before we do that, um, also, and this is late breaking for us, um, because we actually are recording earlier than we normally would. Uh, but uh, the West Virginia, Oklahoma game has also been postponed and yes. or canceled. They're officially saying postponed at this time, The uh, which was one of our slew picks, but it happened uh, too close to air for, for us to make a change with Thursday being Thanksgiving, which is our tomorrow with... And we have two games in the sloop picks that are Friday games. We just didn't feel comfortable swapping that out and potentially screwing someone who made their picks too early in the week. So we're only doing six sloop picks this week. All right. All right. Playoff rankings here. Um, I have, don't care. In a way, in a way, they kind of care about the uh, it's the first it's the first time all year that a ranking has mattered. I still don't care. Okay. Well, I, either way, either way, I'm, we still got to let, let, let our listeners know, though. The first rankings come out. <laughs> Kyle, got Alabama do you really one. think, do you really think there's anyone listening right now who's like, oh, I can't wait to find out. Come on. This came out on Tuesday. This is getting released to the general public on Friday. Do you really think anyone's listening to the show right now that doesn't know that Ohio State was unjustifiably ranked number four? But I don't care. Let's be very clear. I don't care. Maybe, maybe they should have uh, played Boston college better. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that was the official excuse given. And I always feel bad for the poor dude who has to, as Kyle was saying, Bama one, Notre Dame two, Clemson three, Ohio state four. The poor. And I always feel bad for the dude that they stick out there who has to give like one liner answers to sum up the opinions of 12 people who, ha you know, they talked for Lord knows how long about each team and why this and why that. And then the, the conference or the, uh, I want to say conference commissioner, the um, committee commissioner or whatever the hell they call him has to go out there and give like one or two lines to surmise hours of conversation and the opinions of 13 people. So I get that. Well, let's not put a tremendous amount of weight on what he says. Now that being said, I'm about to put a tremendous amount of weight on what he's just said. He said that the reason Clemson was number three and therefore we can assume why that means they're higher than Ohio state was that they looked impressive and dominant in all of their games. Did, did you watch did Boston College? I mean, we can, the Trevor, they're getting a Trevor Lawrence pass, which we knew would happen, which honestly is fine. I'm really not even mad about it as far as the Notre Dame game goes. But really? You're, you're going to dock Ohio State for giving up a bunch of points to a 10th? The currently the ranked 12th, currently right 12th now. ranked Indiana and Clemson won by seven points to, uh, Oh, they're not on here. <laughs> Unranked. Uh, that in Bama struggled against a terrible, terrible. Was it Mississippi? Mississippi State, I forget, but they gave uh, up. A... Let, me, let me find them on here, Jared. They are. No, I didn't. Nope, they're not on here either. I didn't ask if they were ranked. I just forgot which Mississippi it was. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it honestly does not matter. Kyle, that might be the funniest thing you've ever said on the show. And it is Ole Miss, by the way. Okay. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. All right, that's enough. I don't. I really don't feel like wasting too much time griping about this. Let's let's Northwestern move. eight. Northwestern eight. So the good news there 
is that what you could very well have is Ohio State getting if you know we have to we do have to cheer for Northwestern. First off, Ohio State if they win, they're in. I want to be very clear about that. If Ohio State wins, no they're going to the playoff. If they win out, they're going to the playoff period. Now, let's worry about seeding. From a mm-hmm. seeding standpoint, this is a separate conversation. From a seeding standpoint, it will be good for Ohio State if Northwestern wins out. Well, it for, wins out the regular season, obviously. Uh, and then Ohio State gets to defeat a Northwestern team that will be mm-hmm. eight-ish for the you know, for that game, depending upon if people pass them, if people fall behind them, so on and so forth. So that will be very important from a seeding standpoint, especially if Ohio state can win that big 10 championship game convincingly. And also, you know, Notre Dame and Clemson are going to play each other again. If Notre Dame defeats, which I think is what we have to cheer for at this point, I think what we have to cheer for in the ACC championship game, Kyle, feel free to disagree with me on this, is a blowout. I I think because either way, I think maybe either way, both of those teams are currently in the driver's seat to make the playoff, no matter what happens in the ACC title game. Yep. One of those teams is going to go Both of those teams. I think... If they if they go to overtime again, if that's the game they have in the ACC title game, I think they both go to the playoffs. And yes, that's Clemson with a second loss. I acknowledge that. Yes, I'm aware that the rule is don't lose twice. Yes, I acknowledge that. But Jared, hold on. But but <laughs> I'm looking at that number seven spot right there. Cincinnati. I'm looking at I know. Cincinnati there. You can look at Cincinnati all you want, and but obviously the committee is not looking at Cincinnati. That that's that's the reality of the situation. I I don't know who they have left on their schedule to convince anyone that they belong there. Yeah, because probably... the American just isn't very good this year, and you arguably the best win they had left they completed last week with UCF. Well. Currently, and they got a correct. Me, uh, I don't have Cincinnati's schedule up in front of me, Kyle. Correct me if I'm wrong. Who do they have left on their schedule? Is, is there anyone there who I should give a damn about? They have one game left. They have one game left. And Tulsa currently ranked at Tulsa. Okay. I uh, didn't. Yeah. And uh, what, I don't know how the American is. is I don't know how the American is doing their championship game this year, to be honest with you. So I'm not exactly I think, sure. I think it's like the ACC. It's straight down. Yeah, they, they didn't do two. divisions. They, they canceled so in this their divisions case, in this year. In this case, year. it's going to be like just like last year. Uh, going to play uh, that Cincinnati is going to be playing pretty much back-to-back games with the same team. Currently right now in the American, Cincinnati undefeated. Tulsa with one loss. Well, technically no losses in the conference. And then SMU has two losses there. So, all right, Kyle, it, it's pretty much it. I would love to talk about playoff scenarios with you from now forever. And con- we honestly have a few, we have several more episodes to do exactly that. Yep. So I would, lo- I would love to keep talking about this, but we do need to move on. All right. All right. Let's go into our slew picks then. All right, Kyle, let's do the slew picks. Uh, already stated, we're only doing six this week. So that, uh, that stinks, but that's, that's 2020. Uh, let's see. Sun card. Sun card is our guest picker this week. Kyle, our homie sun card. Um, well, really one of our OGs in regards to Sloopcast fandom for sure. One of our OGs. Uh, now he said, I want to, he, he starts with a bit of a preamble here. Mm-hmm. So normally sun card, because we've been going over so much lately, really wouldn't justify this much of a preamble, but you're one of our OGs. So I got you. He says story time. The reason I requested Illinois was because back in 2018, we had a friendly wager. If I won the picks that week, back when it was just Jared and Kyle, Suncard started the guest picker thing. If you want to know about how much of an OG he is. 
uh, we would have the throwback intro for the game, which was the following week, by, by which he means, and I'm about to make Suncard very happy on this. If you didn't listen to the first couple seasons of the show, we used to start the show with Anchors Up, Sales at Full. Uh, I just made him real happy with that. That was our old <laughs> intro to the show. Uh, he says, the Bucks were favored by a million and would have covered had there not been a monsoon in the middle of the third quarter. So instead of the throwback intro, uh, we all crave so much. You're welcome. I ended by buying them t-shirts. My fellow Sloop Cats, I am here to avenge that loss. If I if I win the Sloop Picks this week, I request the throwback intro for the game this season. He says, I'm horrible at my picks this year, so I am literally going to just use math. I'm going to subtract their median score totals to decide who should be uh, who should be favored. So he, he's a math teacher. He's going to throw some math at us. We'll figure it out. All but right. yeah, uh, right. Suncard <laughs> responsible for the guest pickers. And uh, I, Kyle, you want to take him up on the uh, if he wins, we'll we'll do the we'll do the old school intro. You want to take him sure. up on that? Sure, let's do that. All right, well, we, deal, Sun Card, deal. All right, first game here. Iowa State taking on Texas. It's a noon kickoff on ABC, and the Longhorns are favored by one and a half. Now, Jared. Yeah. I have no idea why Texas is favored in this. <laughs> Give me the Cyclones. Uh, I... I, I think I do. I think Texas is playing better, not great. And I think that Iowa State is a very good team. But at a certain point, you do have to consider talent. And again, Texas, like Oklahoma, started off very poorly, but have seemed to at least somewhat found their footing. And again, with the depth of talent in in Austin, I'm this feels a bit like a pick 'em. It's being projected mostly as a pick 'em, but at one and a half points, I just have to go with the talent. So I'm going to go Texas. Well, a lot of that talent is leaving Texas, by the way. Well, I'm talking specifically the team already in Austin. <laughs> we already know. Oh, crap, Kyle. Caleb Burton committed to Ohio State. How did we not include that in the news? I was going to say that later as, as I was thinking about that. Yes. The best, <laughs> the best, the number one wide receiver in the 2022 class. That's not the active class we're working in right now. That's the next recruiting class uh, who is from Texas, by the way, which is why we bring this up now has committed to Ohio state. This is the Quinn Ewers effect. I mean, he may have come anyway, but <laughs> the Quinn Ewers thing, it's the effect. It, yes. it, it may, it may have tipped it over. All right, Kyle. Uh, All right. Let's see what sun card says yep. here. He says, if I told you that I haven't watched a single down of either of those teams, would you believe me? Also earthquakes are weather. <laughs> no, they aren't. <laughs> Hurricanes. Median score, median score has 41 to 37 four for Texas. So Texas covers sun card with a st- would a stampede of longhorns that shook the ground count as weather? No. Weather happens in the atmosphere. This is this is a Patreon argument come to the podcast. <laughs> or excuse me, a Discord argument come to the podcast. Now you yeah. want you want to know what is weather? Cyclones. Which yes. is Iowa State. All right, next game here. Notre Dame taking on the Tar Heels. 3.30 ABC. Uh, both of these games are Friday, by the way. Yes. Uh, Notre Dame is favored by four and a half. Um, this one's interesting. Like four and a half is really low. I was a little surprised to see this at four and a half. Uh, so obviously I got Notre Dame to cover here. I just, I know it's in North. I know it's in Chapel Hill. Um, I don't care. Coach Brown has a has his team really um, working together, winning some winning um, six games or six and two this year. I just 
I just think Notre Dame is just going to be too much for them to handle. I'll, I'll take I'll take my chances and say that Notre Dame covers. Uh, Vegas must know something we don't is my only explanation on this one. So maybe I'm a sucker for saying, wow, this number's stupid low. Give me Notre Dame. But that's exactly what I'm doing. But mm-hmm. no, uh, North Carolina started off the season looking really good, but they've fallen off of that since. They lost to Florida State, a team that straight up is a dumpster fire this year. They lost to Virginia, who's not very good. And last week against Wake, they they let up 53 points, or they allowed, yeah, let up, allowed, same thing, 53 points against Wake Forest last week. They didn't even look all that great against Duke, who might be one of the absolute worst teams in all of college football. <laughs> I I got I have no idea. This is not this is not the Tar Heels of September. These are the Tar Heels of November. Yep. Had this line would have been what I expected back then. That's this is the line I would have expected in September when the Tar Heels looked good. They don't look like that team anymore. All right. Uh, so you got Notre Dame as well. Let's see, Sun Card here says, I really want Notre Dame to run the table and be de- undefeated when they lose to whoever in the first round of the playoffs. But that's unlikely. He has median score 44.5 to 43.5. So one point for UNC. So he has, UN, he has UNC to cover. <laughs> it's an interesting system he has. It is. Another interesting systems here, Penn State and Michigan. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. How could I not? Kyle, now, normally we try and do some of the best games for the slew picks, but honestly, how could I not? Mm -hmm. Noon game on ABC. Combined record is two and eight for these two teams. (laughs) Michigan is a two and a half point favorite. Now, I got Notre Dame or Notre Dame. Whoo-hoo. I got Michigan to cover here. By the and way, the reason why, that's the re- that's an apt mistake. <laughs> yeah. the, the reason, the reason I have Michigan to cover is because I believe that Penn State locker room, the players have just, they just given up. From what I've seen, when I saw last week at that Penn State game versus Michigan, like Michigan at least fought back and fought to win that game. Granted, it was against Rutgers. Yeah. They at least fought back. They showed some sort of um, uh, mindset to go out and win a game. I just I don't see that with this Penn State team. This Penn State team is so just flat. It's a, such a boring team. No, there's just no, just no energy out there at all. I'll, I'll take Michigan here. Kyle, both of these teams suck. I think this is a coin flip game. Give me the underdog. So okay. give me Penn State based purely on the fact that they're plus two and a half instead of minus two and a half. All right. That's that's my entire logic. All right. And I like some cards here. Someone has to win, right? Uh, this is 2020. No. <laughs> yeah, it could be put, it could be canceled. I Not mean, postponed, in, but canceled. In all honesty, that's the world we live in right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, this game a night might literally be for who keeps their coaching job another week. Median score twenty four to twenty three, one point to Michigan. So he has Penn State to cover as well. Further, I really, really hope. I really hope Franklin doesn't lose his job. And, and in Harbaugh, well, I, I but that's for a different reason. <laughs> I I want Harbaugh. I I, I think Franklin doesn't deserve to be fired for this season. There's one coach that should be fired or let go, or I never want to hear a single word from him again. I know exactly who you're talking about, but let's move forward. Uh, Auburn (laughs) in Alabama. This is a three 30 kickoff on CBS without currently, as we're recording this without coach Saban on the sideline. he, He won't, Kyle, he will not be on the sideline. He has symptoms. He will not be on the sideline. Bama is a 24 and a half point favorite. 
I don't know, 24 and a half just seems like a lot to me. I know I know Auburn isn't a great team, but 24 and a half is a lot in a rivalry game here. I'll, 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 take, I'll take Auburn to cover, but not by much. Not by much. I'm, I'm real conflicted on this game. Uh, I would not, I mean, I, I don't ever bet real life money, but I would not bet real life money on this. Auburn, I believe, is a really, really bad football team a really bad football team and they've worked their way back into the top 25 because their last games have been against Tennessee. Who's awful LSU. Who's awful Mississippi. Who's awful. And Arkansas. Who's awful. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot that they lost to South Carolina who is also awful. This is not a banner year in the sec. Not in the West anyway. I think uh, I think Florida's decent, and I think Georgia's decent, but Bama is the only good team in the West this year. I don't. I don't care what I, Texas A and M's five. I don't care. Point is, is that there's not a very good middle. It's a very top heavy SEC this year. There's no one in the middle. Mm-hmm. So Auburn has no business being ranked right now. Just none. No business being ranked this year. No. Uh, Bama's rolling, and I think that that number is generous for Auburn. And if it weren't a rivalry game, and if it weren't the Iron Bowl, and had I not seen terrible Auburn teams take it to Alabama in the past, then I would just be take oh, Bama minus 24 and a half. Yeah, sign me up. But it's just because it's the Iron Bowl, and we've seen crazy stuff happen in the Iron Bowl. Um, but I'm going to try and put that aside and I'm probably just going to, going to put that aside and I'm just going to be like, I think Bama is in fact more than 24 and a half points better than Auburn. So yes, uh, give me Bama. All right. Sim card here says, is this Saban's last iron bowl? Just heard he's out with COVID. So maybe he has already coached his last iron bowl. Shrug emoji. He has median score 48 to 30 which is 18 points for Alabama. So Auburn covers. By the way, we go back in the archive. I think it's technically season five towards the end of season five. I had Tony. It's a, I think it's grilling Gerdeman two. Um, the, the, the squeakle. I was the squeakle. I yeah. think is what I called it. Um, we, we talked about how Nick Saban, we talked about what we thought Nick Saban's retirement timeline looked like. So, I'd like to elaborate on that, but we don't have the time. So go listen to that episode. If you'd like to hear uh, Tony Gerdman and I talk about that. All right. Next Uh, game here. Next game here, Jared, we have Pittsburgh and Clemson. It's three 30 on ESPN and Clemson is a 24 and a half point favorite. You got, you got Trevor Lawrence back. You're going to have a team that's just wanting to play after after not being able to play last week. Uh, getting to see Lawrence back on the field again here. Yeah, we have not seen Clemson since the 7th of November. Yeah, it's been a long time. Been a long time. And even, yeah, even longer that we haven't seen Lawrence. We haven't seen Lawrence in like a month. Uh, yeah. ten twenty four when they played Syracuse would have been the last time. Mm-hmm. So how, how rusty is he going to be? Or are they just going to come out on fire? I think it's going to be the latter. So I'll take, I'll take Clemson to cover here. Yeah. But the Pittsburgh super weapon, I'm always, I'm always keeping an eye on the Pittsburgh super weapon. I, I don't know, Kyle. I don't right. know. It's, it's weird. Now is Clemson 24 and a half points better than Pittsburgh? Yeah, absolutely. Pittsburgh's not, not that great. By the way, if we're talking about eye test, if we're talking about, Oh, Ohio state's number four because of the eye test. Da, 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 da. Notre Dame went to two overtimes with a terrible Pittsburgh team last week, a team that is minus 24 to Clemson took Notre Dame to two overtimes last week. But keep telling me that Ohio State's number four because of the eye test. But I proceed. 
Now, now you can make the excuse oh, of like, time out. Hasn't sorry, had any... sorry, time out. Forget I said all of that. I my I thought I had the Pittsburgh schedule up and I had the Clemson schedule up. Da 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 da. I didn't do anything. All right, quit looking well, at me. You got to pick. Quit looking at me you like pick that. Here. Quit looking at me like that, Kyle. You got to pick. I'm picking Clemson. Okay. I the Pittsburgh super weapons always present in my mind. I mm-hmm. I think it's possible that Pittsburgh wins this game. You have Trevor Lawrence who hasn't played in a month. You have Clemson who hasn't played in three weeks. Will they look rusty? Could this be a weird Thanksgiving game? It's possible. I feel like one or two things happen. I feel like Clemson either shows up hungry and motivated and slaps the crap out of Pittsburgh or they show up rusty and ill-prepared and Trevor Lawrence maybe make some early mistakes due to just being out for a while and Pittsburgh capitalizes on those things and we could have a ball game. Mm-hmm. I just think that the latter, the, excuse me, not the latter, the former is, is more likely and that Clemson slams Pittsburgh. But I feel like it's either an incredibly close game in which either team has a chance to win in the final couple minutes or Clemson gets slapped mm-hmm. or excuse me, Pittsburgh gets slapped. Well, some card thinks that Pittsburgh is going to cover here. He says, can Pitt be the pit we all know and love that he's talking mm-hmm. about the pit super weapon. Mm-hmm. Hey, he's talking about the pit mm-hmm. super weapon. Okay. He says one can only hope median score 41 and a half to 29. 12 and a half points for Clemson. So Pitt covers. And we are not doing just, Oklahoma and West Virginia game. So we're correct. skipping over that one. Oh, by the way, just, just for the record, because I feel like I owe Notre Dame this for spreading false information before, because my eyes drifted to the wrong, I had the wrong tab up on my Explorer. Um, Notre Dame defeated Pittsburgh 45 to three, which is significantly different than going to two overtimes. It is. Yes. So, once again, apologies to Notre Dame. All right. Next up here, we have our sponsors. Yes. Kyle, you go first because I'm lost and I have too many tabs open. I'm going to start closing some of these tabs. Jared is I'm lost. honor of good eyes today. I'm, I know I'm, you're lost. What would you do without me? What huh. would you do without the seasonings from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company? Look, we've been saying it for a long time now. Mad Canadian has gift sets now. There's no excuse for you to not get some of the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at themadcanadianbbq.com. You just send it, which is a great introductory um, seasoning package. The Sweet Heat gets some good spicy, uh, the old fashions in there too, the two borders in there, the great um, mix of seasonings or just get one of everything, get the whole hog. That way you can mix and match every, anything and everything art for your next barbecue. Check out all of this at themadcanadianbbq.com and be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered for Christmas. This episode of the SLOOPCAST is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That's right. The Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, I told you why you should probably buy from them during the first ad read. Let's talk about some of the coffees. By the way, I also want to add uh, fair trade certified USDA organic. Uh, let's talk about some of the coffees. I think we talked about the. Mm, let's see. I don't know. Uh, I don't think I've talked about these ones in a while. The drink from the skull of your enemy. Uh, this is a traditional Indonesian coffee. It is edgier, smokier, thick, creamy and chocolatey with notes of cedar and sweet tobacco. I got to try this one next. That sounds really good. Wine and spice. Wine and spice. I think I have a sampler pack of that. That's that's going to have to be the next one. Uh, let's see. There's That's a dark roast, by the way. Uh, there's also the Fear No Evil, which is a dark roast. Uh, in fact, this one's not just a dark roast. It is a black roast. Uh, he says it is roasted to the brink of flames. This is a rich black dark roast void of all like the sheen is like polished armor the feel is like cocoa butter there's also the integrity 
Uh, this is the this is a mainstay of the Iron Bean selection. Um, dark roasted makes a great espresso. I think that's one of the ones you can get in the K cups. I think some the more popular flavors are in K cups, so you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, they also have some flavored coffees. Uh, there's the Mom's Carrot Cake, the Intense Blueberry, the Mint Chocolate Chip, um, the Unicorn, which I have back here, is typically a flavored coffee but you, you're not going to know how it's flavored. That's part of the fun of it. Uh, so you can find that you can find, uh, even more coffees than I just mentioned at ironbeancoffee.com. It's iron bean coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, we have one more game to pick. We have one more game and that is your Ohio state fighting Buckeyes heading over to Champaign. To take on Illinois fighting Illini. It's always hard for me to say. <laughs> Illini. Illini. A lion eye. A lion eye. That was always I don't even know if you're doing a bit right now. <laughs> Maybe I am. I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I don't even know at this point. Good. Some people are it, like, you guys mispronounce names. I'm like, it's part of a bit. And, but sometimes it's not, but sometimes it is. It's just sort of us exaggerating the truth. Even I'm lost sometimes. <laughs> well, more on Lost coming up here as we get to know our enemy here. This game is Nooner on Fox Sports 1. That's Fox Sports. Why, why Fox Sports 1? What are we doing? I don't know. That's Ohio it. Ohio State okay. is favored by 28 and a half points. Okay. Kyle? Did you, Jared. did you say Fox Sports? One. Uh, did you s- attempt to say a lion eye? Tried. <laughs> I you, tried. Did you say nooner? <laughs> hmm? Did you say nooner? Either nooner or 12. I think you said nooner. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I think that means it is time to know your enemy. That's right. Know your enemy. It is time to know the Illinois fighting a lion eye. Kyle, um, general impressions. You want to start with general impressions? Um, I, I, you want me to go first? I go mm-hmm. first about Take Illinois. It away. Take it away. So a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I was on the morning scoop with Tom Moore. And I told him we know two things about the Big Ten. We know Ohio State's very good. We know Illinois is very bad. Um, since then they have won two games because I am so terrible at, at picking games We know that, Jared. that Illinois wins out of spite, out of spite to me. They're not winning for any other reason. The world revolves around me. I am a narcissist. They defeated Rutgers in a very close game. Uh, and then they slapped Nebraska. They slapped Nebraska in Lincoln. Not that it being in Lincoln matters a lot in 2020, but they slapped Nebraska in Lincoln. A program on the rise, Kyle is is Ohio state maybe facing an Illinois team. That's a lot better now than when they were say towards the end of October is, is, is this team better than they were a month ago when they got blown out by Wisconsin 45 to seven. All right. All right. Let's look. Let's let's pump the brakes here. I was I was just asking a question. Let's pump the brakes. Here. I was just asking a question. Last two games here, the two victories that Illinois had had has had. Yeah. Nebraska. And Rutgers. Yeah. But Kyle Rutgers is at least as good as Michigan. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> okay. Three, three overtimes almost. Yes. In regulation. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that Illinois is on the rise here, but they've definitely adjusted to the mistakes they've had early on. I mean, they lost 45 to seven to Wisconsin. They lost to Purdue. They got whomped by a bad Minnesota team. And they've, they've, 
barely beat Rutgers and they had their first really good showing against Nebraska last weekend. So that's kind of what I want to talk about here was last weekend here for, for Illinois here. Um, let me remove that there. So last week, Illinois, all, all, all year, Illinois just cannot figure out who their quarterback is. Sure. So last week they played Brandon Peters. The week before that against Rutgers, they played Isaiah Williams Mm -hmm. and they played two or three other quarterbacks throughout the year too. Okay. Who who are we going to see this weekend? I would guess Williams. Maybe you can't put Peters in against Ohio state. (laughs) That's, that's just, that's not a thing you can do. He's been there. He's done that. It's not gone well. Mm Mm-hmm. So like last week was the first week and I'm not exaggerating. I think this was the first week here and I'm pulling up all the games here that Illinois went above. Nope. They did it against Purdue. They only did it a second time all year that their quarterbacks went above 50% completion. Is that bad? It's very bad, Jerry. Okay. I mean, Fields threw three interceptions last week and still passed for like 60%. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to make sure. Bad, 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 bad. Kyle, I, th- I, think, I feel like you're, I feel like maybe you're burying the lead about what happened in the Nebraska versus Illinois game. We talk about Illinois having their first really good showing of the year against Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Now, I did not get to watch this game in whole. I, I saw like the replay in 90 minute thing on, on the Big Ten Network. Um, it doesn't take up, but really, if you want to know why Illinois performed so well in this game, you really only need to take a real quick glance at the box score. Five. Kyle is holding five. up the number five. Nebraska. Five. Five turnovers. Turnovers. Illinois, zero. That is a minus five in the turnover differential for Nebraska, plus five for... With those five turnovers, Illinois still only had 100 yards more Well, (laughs) than Nebraska. That that actually explains... Anyway, uh, they had an equal number of first downs. Uh, I, I don't... I'm not, I'm not going to say that Illinois would have otherwise lost because as Kyle stated, it would have been closer. It would have been a lot closer. It would have been a lot closer. Illinois did outgain Nebraska by over a hundred yards. So credit where credit's due. Uh, the first downs were equal. I, I think what Kyle is saying is absolutely accurate in that if you want to take it to Ohio state, then you need a quarterback who can do stuff. I think is ultimately what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. Can, can, can Nebraska do stuff through the air? And uh, no, they, they can't. Kyle has already told you about mm-hmm. their completion percentage, about their, one of the deepest quarterback rotations uh, we have ever seen. Uh, their best wide receiver, Kyle. Their best wide receiver and i'm gonna say his name i've been i'm gonna I'm try and say his name josh imater bebe i think that's i think that's actually pretty good josh imater bebe uh best wide receiver on the team in my opinion by far has 15 catches 215 yards and two touchdowns five games into the season averaging three catches per game your yeah. best receiver. Yeah. And their second best receiver is their tight end, Daniel Barker, who's had 12 catches for 174 yards. Yeah. Now, now we're going to play devil's advocate here, Jared. Okay. Ohio State's DBs have been terrible. I'm, I'll put it right there. They're, they've just been terrible this year. You, you, look at, you look at the numbers, you look at the stats here. 
Ohio State has been, has allowed almost 291, or well, exactly 291 yards per game through the year. Not good. Not no. good at all. No. <laughs> um, but that being said, like, Maryland worried me a tad, and I will still say that it was a good thing Ohio State didn't have to play Maryland. Maryland worried me a tad because the fight despite the fact that I don't think Maryland was a very good football team. I was worried that in the ways they were bad or rather, I guess maybe in the ways they were good lined up against Ohio state's weaknesses, which is to say they had athletic wide receivers and a quarterback who could throw the ball. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact that Maryland was a pretty bad football team, they did worry me. And I now, so to say that, I now have to say that Illinois is a bad football team, but they're not good in a way that worries me. Now, that being said, Ohio State has given up yards to some pretty bad quarterbacks this year. So, I guess take that for what it's worth. Um, The Ohio State coaching staff has to, and has been attempting to, make some changes some schematic changes, potentially some personnel changes to fix what's happening in the secondary because it's, it's bad. It's very, yeah. very bad. Illinois is definitely going to have to find some sort of rhythm, something in the air here, uh, just because Ohio State's run defense has been stellar, allowing less than 100 yards per game uh, so far this season. Now, Illinois' strength to this team has been their running backs, uh, Mike Epstein and Chase Brown, uh, both very close in, in carries and carries and yards to combined. They have 100 and, <clears throat> excuse me, 116 rushes for almost 700 yards for the season. Yeah. That's, that's this, that's this offense right here, but how well are they going to be effective against uh, Ohio state's front seven? I'm going to wager not that not that well. No, and so Ohio State's front seven started off the season poorly, but have unlike the secondary sort of figured things out. Yep. Um, that and Illinois is not a better running football team than Indiana. Maybe they are. Maybe that's not a fair statement. Indiana definitely doesn't try to throw the ball or try to run the ball as much. As, as Illinois for sure, because Indiana knows who they are and they know where their strengths are. But I don't think that Illinois is somehow a, a really good running team by any means. I, I mean, you can look at the stats and, Oh, look at that, Kyle. Did you know that Illinois running game is out gaining their passing game by 60 yards a game? That's a true stat. Uh, unfortunately for Illinois, that says a lot more about their passing numbers than it does their, mm. than it does their, uh, than yeah, their so rushing numbers. Uh, yeah, Illinois, Illinois passing for 159, rushing for 222. Ohio State, 233 rushing, 302 passing. It's it's abnormal to have your rushing that far ahead of your passing. Passing mm-hmm. just gets more yards. That's what it does. That's what it's supposed to do. I just find it a bit difficult to see Illinois taking advantage of the problems that Ohio State is currently having. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think, I think Williams might, I think Williams has promise. Yeah. And, so if you, yeah, if you look at the game against but, but Rutgers... He's, but he's not there yet, and he doesn't have the talent around him. No, and you look at the game against Rutgers, uh, Isaiah Williams, 7 for 18, 104 yards. Not good numbers. But you look at the other part of this, Isaiah Williams, 31 carries for 192 yards against Rutgers. Yeah. Now, he didn't play last week against um, against Nebraska, but... You're looking at a more mobile quarterback to be able to try to get more first downs to try to extend plays. Maybe go with Isaiah Williams. But Brandon Peters seemed to have, well, did have his best game as 
Um, he's part of the Illinois team this year, uh, last weekend. Oh boy, that is sad. That is sad. <laughs> One, because it's true. And two, because his stats were 18 for 25, 205 yards and a touchdown. Uh, let's see. It, it's tough. It's, it's really tough trying to, trying to figure out who exactly this Illinois team is. I, I still think, I still think what we said originally at the beginning of this year, Jared, it's not a good team. They found, they found ways to win the past two weeks, but they're just not a good football team in general. And if I may, Jared, I like to predict here, by the way, just Illinois, I would just, because I think we've been talking around it, but not actually said it. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Williams, it wasn't a choice not to play Isaiah Williams last week. I think okay. we've been talking around it. I don't think we've actually said it. Uh, he got caught up in some contact tracing re-COVID. Uh, it was a contract trace. It was not a positive test. Mm -hmm. I've not heard anything in regards to whether he is... No. I have not heard that he's not playing. Let's put it that way. I have not heard that he is not playing. So just want to throw that out there. He he was, it wasn't, a, it was, he had a really good game against Rutgers and it's not like Lovey Smith just turned around the next week and said, okay, you sit down. So just, I want to throw that out there just to be very clear because I don't think we actually said that. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll just kind of tell you both about like Peters had his, Best day last week. Yeah. But Williams, very threatening on the ground. So kind of just prepare for one of the quarterbacks or both. Maybe both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I just, and it's, that, it's that old saying, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any. I think Isaiah Williams is their quarterback. Honestly, um, mm -hmm. because we can't start talking about Peters being good because he didn't look terrible against Nebraska. I mean, let's not get too crazy about again, two Oh five and a touchdown. Yeah. It was it his best game. Yeah. But that's again, that says a lot more about his other games than it does about that game. Isaiah Williams is their quarterback and I mm. am under the impression that he is playing this weekend, but I don't think we know that for a hundred percent certainty. Yep. Therefore we want to prepare you for both. Yep. All right. Defensively three names. I want to throw out to throw out to our listeners here. Linebacker Jake Hansen uh, leads the team in tackles, has a pair of interceptions for the year. Uh, DB Tony a Tony Adams, one of their probably their main uh, DB, and also defensive lineman Owen Carney Jr. Uh, I believe he has the most sacks for the team as well. Just some just some names to throw out there on the defensive side for this Illinois team. Yeah. Uh, we haven't really talked about their defense at all. Um, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, it's I, Ohio State's played worse defenses this year. Uh, they've also played much better defenses this year. They they obviously got lit up terribly against Wisconsin in Week One. The they they gave up forty one points to Minnesota, but Minnesota has looked terrible at times and looked great at times. Um, so it's, it's hard to say for sure exactly what that means. They did hold Rutgers to less points than Ohio state held Rutgers to. Is that worth something? Probably not, but I'm going to go ahead and point it out anyway. Um, I would say that their defense has not looked bad, but they have not played any really good offenses in the big yeah. 10 since Wisconsin. And yep. even now in retrospect, but for reasons that things have possibly changed. So we don't necessarily know because everything that's happened at Wisconsin and continues to happen at Wisconsin. Like, what does that mean? Was Wisconsin that much better in week one? Or was Illinois that ill prepared in week one? It's it's 2020 makes it almost impossible to figure some of this stuff out. Unfortunately, it does. Yeah. So this is this this is a make or break for this uh, for Ohio State's defensive backs here. 
yeah, you can't look bad in this game. I'm just going to go. Not. I'm going to go ahead and say it. This might be a game in which the linebackers don't look their best, especially if Isaiah Williams goes out there and starts running all over the place. That might be a thing that happens. Uh, so be prepared for that. But if either of these quarterbacks light Ohio State up through the air, specifically through the air, I, 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 I there's no excuses to be made. I yeah. mean, th- there's the you lost seven guys. That's that's always going to be the excuse, but but, but we're how many games in right now? Uh, it doesn't matter, Kyle. No one can lose seven people in an off season, especially when three of them were completely un- you were completely unprepared yeah. for. Uh, right. So I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this discussion on Monday's episode. But unfortunately, that excuse is also unfixable. Yeah, that that's the problem with that excuse is that it's here for the entire season. It's not a thing you can fix. All right. All right. It's time for Austin's uh, over-unders here, Jared. All right. right. Austin's over-unders. Let's go ahead and do these quickly. Garrett Wilson, over-under 99 and a half yards. Over. Over. Over for me. Yeah. Tight end touchdowns for Ohio State only. (laughs) One and a half. Under. Because I I think Ohio State's going to run. It's going to really try to really run. Uh, against this Illinois team. Ohio State, I know a lot of people are still, I mean, Ohio State looked really good running the ball last week against Indiana. Ohio State averaging five over five yards a carry for the season. Yeah. That might surprise people. The, the, the death of the Ohio State running game has been greatly exaggerated. Yeah. This is, this is a fact. The, yep. now that being said, if you're running the ball a lot, that does open things up for the tight ends at the goal line. No, I think that opens up more of um, play action for Garrett Wilson, for Olave. Well, that depends. Juice. That depends upon how close you already are to the goal line. Play action opens things up for the pass. If you're far away from the goal line, that's good for especially mm-hmm. Jamison Williams. But if you're close to the goal line, that's real good for the tight ends. Pass attempts by Ohio State pass throwers, not named Justin Fields, 11 and a half. Under. Yeah, under. Hmm. I, that's, that's a big number. Um, I do expect Ohio state to go up big in this game, but given what Ohio state's defenses look like in the second half of games this week, I don't feel like Ryan day is going to be in a hurry yep. to put the backups in. Yep. Ohio state second half points over under 26 and a half under under Ohio state team sacks four and a half. Oh man, that just depends upon which quarterback plays. Yeah, I guess I'll still go with under. I'm gonna go over. Okay. Ohio State team rushing yards over under 169. Nice and a half. Nice. Over. Yeah, over. Team rushing yards? Hell yeah, way over. Yeah, I mean Ohio State. What what I have the number here? Ohio State is averaging 233 per game. Now, 169 and a half. Nice. Uh, that was Master Teague's sole rushing yep. total last week. I think the better question there would have been Master Teague, 169 mm-hmm. and a half over under. Now, it would have probably gone under, but yeah, I think that's the better question. Ohio State defensive turnovers, two and a half. This is a good number because I think I think two is a solid number here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'll, I'll go with under because of that. Then, um, I'm gonna go over. I don't know. I, I feel like this is a really maybe the playoff committee coming out and saying that Ohio State is behind a one loss Clemson. Mm-hmm. Maybe what happened against Indiana last week. Now that it's not a fluke that happened once or twice, now that they were up by 35 to seven at one point, maybe finally this is the slap in the face that the team yep. needs. And Hopefully. I f- feel like at least for this week, Ohio state is going to be playing with some real chip mm-hmm. on their shoulder, pissed off authority. Yes. All right. Let's go and answer some ask Sloopcast questions here, Jared. We have your first Duncan from the Discord. 
Rank the following from least stupid to most stupid. Okay. Um, rankings before, rankings now. Kevin Warren, the person at the team up north that approved the he mishandled the step miss this made the team up north fan cardboard cutout. Or that Tennessee guy who doesn't like Shiano. <sighs> Clay Travis. Okay. Least rankings, stupid to most stupid. So I'm assuming least, by before and now he means like the AP versus the now that we actually have the playoff committee. So yes. I, that's my assumption of what he means by that. So least stupid, I'll put the person who who approved that cutout. Yeah, no, that, that person's a hero. We agree no, on that. that. No, that approved it. So like someone from Michigan approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that one is the least stupid. Okay, that one is the least stupid. I know exactly uh, what he said, Kyle. That yeah, person's okay. a hero. <laughs> All right. The second, I'm going to say rankings now. Yeah. Third, third is rankings before. I, I still agree. Four is that guy, that Tennessee guy who doesn't like Shiano. Yeah. And the most stupid is hashtag fire Kevin Warren. Yeah, and I think the word stupid plays into we're in a cre we are in complete agreement. I think the word stupid comes into very important play here because I think Clay Travis knows what he's doing. Um now that is not to say he's not stupid, but I do think that a lot of his stupidity is intentional for attention grabbing, whereas Kevin Warren is just not very smart. He's mishandled a lot of things. Uh, I don't want to say he's not very smart. I don't know him as a human being, but in the context of being a commissioner of a big time college football conference within that frame, he's very dumb. All right. Uh, from sun card. Do you think this is more of a statement game or a let's get many guys reps game? Uh, it has to be both sun card. You can't get the backups in there and get more people reps unless you make a statement. This is not an either or. This is a this and then that. This is this is a this is a matter of procedure. First you must do the second in order to or excuse me, first you must do the first in order to earn the second. So I I don't I don't think it's a I don't think it's a or situation. I think it's an and then situation. Kyle. Sorry, I'm there's something <laughs> coming up and I'm something? hoping it's not bad news. I'm I'm keeping an eye on what's okay. developing right now. So. so potentially breaking news. Kyle wasn't paying attention and I forgive him for it because yep, I sorry, believe him. It, it could be big here, so uh, now you have me worried. I know. Is it that bad? Let's move on. <laughs> uh, Sun card. Sun card asks us, do you think this is more of a statement game or a let's get many guys? Reps that's, that's, game? that's what we just, that's what I just did. Yes. I, I think this needs to be more of a statement game because of like, I think this has to be more of a statement game just because of, because of like what what everybody else over at the playoff committee thinks of Ohio State right now. You got to come out on fire, just like I think that Clemson's going to be doing right now. Yeah. You're going to have to come out on fire and say, hey, we are one of the four best teams. And Ohio State's case here is like, we want to be that like that second, third rank there because yeah. we saw last year how important that number one spot was there. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, uh, Dinger, second half let down this week? I hope not. Um, I hope not either. Uh, again, Illinois does not have the passing offense to do what Indiana did. No. So if it happens this week, it's real, real bad news. Like I knew Indiana was capable of doing what they did through the air last week. I know that. Mm hmm if it happens this week with this group of offensive players, it's real, real bad news. Um, yep. Let's see. Duncan from the discord. 
He says, uh, I, I don't know what this means. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward. Um, <laughs> Stuart, Stuart underscore E4 US vet. Who grows the better beard, Lovey or Day? So who does do it? Who is, is, is a, I, I'm not sure. Who has done it? Lovey. Lovey has historically grown amazing beards. Amazing beards. I just, we've not seen Day shoot that high. So it's impossible for me to say that Day can't do what Lovey does or has done mm-hmm. in the past. So historically speaking, Lovey has grown better beards, but I don't know that day can't. Um, he's, he's grown some real nice stubble. He's grown some real nice like shadow beards, but he's never like really gone for it. So I have to give the edge to Lovey, but I, we could be wrong. We've just not seen the proof of it from day. Mm hmm. Yep. All right. Also from Stuart, he's going to make us pronounce names. Kyle's going to keep an eye on whatever might be happening. Kyle, is it like we have to scrap this podcast bad? Oh boy. He's not answering me. Um, first name, tight end, number 46, Alec McKetchern. Let me make this, hold on. Let me make this bigger. I think I'm getting old. McKetchern. Yeah, Mc... McKechern, 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 McKechern. There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, number 94, the defensive lineman, Jerzon Newton. You nailed it. Um, Defensive tackle, number 69. Missed it. Moses. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Um, Oak Paula. I kind of want to pronounce that. Okay. Is Oak. What do you think, Kyle? Number 69. Oak Paula. Yeah. I kind of just, I, I announced that as a long O, even mm-hmm. though I have really no right to do it. Um, that is Alex Palziski. Yes. I, I, I can I can get like 90% of the way on most Polish names. All right. All right. Uh, scrolling down, number five, the linebacker, Milo, Milo Effler. Milo I, Effler. Or Eifler? Eifler, Eifler. I'll go with Eifler. Oh, Eifler is even better. All right. Uh, number 88, the tight end. We already said that. Or tight end? No. Nope. We said, we said the receiver. We said the number nine receiver already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, number they're... 88, the tight end. Well, it's oh, the yeah. same. Nope, nope. Kyle. Hey, they're the same. Hey, I just realized that. <laughs> oh my God. It took you a long time to get there. Speaking of, ah, oh, it's going bad. Uh, <laughs> for 55, the offensive lineman. Um, let's see. Blake. Jir. Sadi. Jir. Sadi. Jir. Sadi. Jir. Sadi. Jir. Sadi. Yeah. Number 32, that... the defensive back. Talon. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. I, I feel like that's probably 80% of the way there. All right. All right. Um, Last one here, Jared. Vet. Ved. Veteran. Ved. Er. Vedarian. 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 Low. Vedarian. Low. All right, Kyle. That's, that's uh, our segment that Stuart makes us pronounce hard names segment that we need a better name for. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's the please name this segment segment featuring Stuart underscore E4 US vet. Kyle, are you still hitting refresh on whatever you're panicking about? All I'm seeing here. And I don't want to say too much because it is behind paid wall. Okay. Uh, One of the insiders says the walkthrough today was not a formal practice due to quote medical concerns. Read that you read, read into that as you will. Okay. So 
if you uh, are actually hearing this podcast. <laughs> uh, that's 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 it from what I see. I've been I've been waiting for more, been waiting for more as I've kind of been seeing that. So lovely. Hey, lovely. Kyle, we have a holiday tomorrow. Let's record this one early. <laughs> Uh, you know, all right. Um, like I said, if you're actually listening to this, congratulations, we might throw this episode away. Who knows? Uh, so Kyle, let's go ahead and just end this episode since we might have to throw it out anyway. Um, make sure to, uh, visit us at our discord server where you can have conversations with Kyle and I and a bunch of other fans. Um, you can get into the premium channels at patreon.thesloopcast.com as well as get early access to episodes. I tell you what, Kyle, the patrons are going to get this episode one way or the other. They might be the only ones that get this episode. Who knows? Um, depending upon exactly what that means with Ohio State and if this game actually happens or not. Um, and uh, if you are looking for uh, us on Twitter, that's... Uh, Sloopcast Kyle. That's at Sloopcast Kyle, and I'm just at Sloopcast. Um, for those of you who watch us on YouTube, that's right there and right. Th- I can't point on Kyle's screen. Right there. <laughs> I, for a second, I thought I could. I don't know why. Um, that's on uh, our screens there. Mm-hmm. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not watching on YouTube, at Sloopcast is me. At Sloopcast Kyle is get this Kyle. <laughs> And if you're looking for any of those links, whether it be the Discord, the Patreon, our sponsors, our T-shirt stores, uh, our Twitter links, if you're looking for any of that stuff, uh, you can visit us at thesloopcast.com. And you can just, like I said, find all the stuff at thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? The crew. The crew plays first year team nashville sc this sunday night at 8 p.m for the conference semifinals nice there were some some big upsets uh over this past week weekend a lot of teams we were not expecting to lose so crew wins this there's a good they they're in a really good spot to keep moving forward yeah absolutely 8 p.m 8 8 p.m this sunday yeah uh this is uh, obviously a huge game. Nashville, I'll go ahead and say, really doesn't have any business being this deep into the playoff, which is, um, again, because of a lot of upsets that Kyle is talking about. So, uh, yeah, we're keeping an eye on that crew. They should have a pretty decent chance against Nashville, but we'll see because Nashville's already uh, exceeding expectations and that just might mean that they keep doing that. So yes. uh, we'll see. I think is ultimately where we're at on that. Do you have anything else in Kyle's corner? That's it. That's all I got. All right. Um, if you're actually listening to this episode, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to have to throw this episode out, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight's ending music will be by uh, a Columbus band called Morning Theft. So if you want to listen to them, you can check out the links in the doobly do, which is a thing we still say as if it's 2013. Um, you can I stole that joke from someone. <laughs> you can um, yeah, just visit the sloopcast.com, find all this stuff and ch- check out the show notes for links for uh, the sloopcast.com as well as links for morning theft. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Morning Theft. Hi, YouTube. Hi. Discussion offline, Jared. (laughs) We need to have a discussion offline? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, let's rejoin our audio listeners. <laughs> God damn it. Once again, we'd like to thank Morning Theft for ending today's episode. And I would l- like to thank uh, Iron Bean Coffee for sponsoring today's episode. 
Um, we ran through some of the great coffees that they have at Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, once again, I want to encourage you to check them out. Ohio-based, Ohio-owned company, veteran-owned company. You literally can't get fresher coffee. You literally can't. Uh, they do not roast this coffee until you order it. This is especially true if you live in or near Toledo because you can pick it up at the store. So it doesn't even spend time in the mail getting to you. Also, uh, if you live in or near Ohio, it's not going to take that long to get through the mail anyway. And if you place an order of $50 or more, then it's free shipping. It's win-win all around. Uh, they have a sampler bag if you're not sure which coffee you want, because I named a bunch of great coffees before. They have a sampler bag. You can get six different coffees in a box. They come in smaller bags. Uh, I think about maybe quarter size bags approximately. Uh, that way you can try a bunch of different ones. Uh, that's how I found the uh, some of the great ones I've found so far. Uh, all of their coffees are fair trade certified, USDA organic. And these are all high quality coffee beans sourced directly from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, India, in Indonesia. I almost got through it. And other far off lands. Uh, you can save money by using a subscription service. If you find that one coffee that you love, you can do that. So you can find all of that and more at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian is also an Ohio-based company, just like our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um the Mad Canadian has been around for a year now and has since pretty much, I think he's pretty much almost doubled his seasoning since he first started. I think when he first started, he had like eight. Something yeah, like that. I think he I want to like, say so. Had about eight seasonings. He's now up to 14. And if you purchase the gift set, the whole hog, you can get each of the 14 seasonings that the Mad Canadian currently has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. If you don't want the whole hog, you can go ahead and pick out any of the 14 that he has available there or choose one of the other two sets, the Just Send It or the Sweet Heat. Check out uh, his site for more information about that. Also, be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered for Christmas. Hey, YouTube. My face, a uh, playlist. Kyle's face, subscribe. Um, it might say Buckeye Scoop. It might say Buckeye Sloopcast. Uh, either way, please subscribe to both channels and uh, listen wherever you want. I don't care. You can listen on our channel. You can listen on the Buckeye. It seriously means nothing to me. Do whatever you want. Um, but uh, please subscribe to both. Thank you. Bye.